All right, hey guys, this is Turak, and uh, don't mind me, I'm just tired today. Uh, I had a lot, I wanted to record this earlier, but I had contractors over and everything, and just, I'm trying to warm, psych myself up here to get ready for this. Um, so One Piece chapter 1130 came out this morning, and um, oh boy, do we get, we got into Elbath. We are definitely in Elbath. Um, actually, I want to pull something up. So... Uh, in the last chapter, the Straw Hats finally, uh, uh, what was that, like three chapters worth of, uh, uh little shenanigans in the, um, in, uh, let me pull this up, in, uh, this Lego world of the, uh, Viking, uh, Elbeth, uh, giant named Rode, who had, we found out had captured the Straw Hats, uh, with his, by using his, uh, crow, and, uh, the uh, Straw Hats successfully used uh, with the uh, appropriation of uh, the, uh, what do you call that, the cat, their, uh, Rhodes' cat. They were able to get to the other side, and Luffy uh, helped them uh, bash to the wall. And sorry, I'm just trying to find, I want to get this going. I'm just trying to get this prep ready, and it's just getting late. Where is that? Uh, skip. Hold on. Skip. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just getting some videos ready. Where is my chapter? I had these ready last time. Ooh, right there. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. What the heck happened? That, all right. Let me just pull up here. Yeah, so they escaped, and the, the Oda had left us on a cliffhanger with the... Um, with uh, no screenshot. With uh, oh, um, Luffy being uh, looking at something, and he didn't show us what it was. But now we can see that's actually uh, Wano. And actually, I'm just trying to pull up. Sorry, I um, got here. Where'd it go? So in uh, oh, I don't know. In uh, I was looking back because in in uh, uh, had I talked as I talked on the other chapter review the um, uh. The character that had apprehended the uh, kidnapped the uh, Straw Hats is a member of these new giant pirates, and here it is. Oda showed these characters to us back in um, back during uh, Totland and, on these cover stories. We because we met uh, Harudin here back in um, back at Dressrosa. And I got to look over what he said. And he uh, was there to claim the Mara Mara uh, fruit, as I said. Why is this like this? Okay. Come on. And, um, and he, uh, we saw it during the little, um, what's that? Frig is going on. One second. God damn. Where was I? Sorry. I'm just, <sighs> okay. It's like getting this done this day. Uh, so yeah, then uh, in the last chapter, yeah, we realized that this guy was this guy was portraying the sun god, which is something we have to. I want to go over a little more today because everyone here, is, the sun god thing keeps coming up here, and it's hilarious. In this case, Rode appears to be cosplaying as the sun god, but he decided on his own little design for it, which actually I found interesting. I was so I went back to um, the chapters that we showed Rode and these other new giant pirates that uh, have um, Harudin as the captain of and i actually noticed one thing that was interesting and that is that um where is it here wait where'd that one go i have a picture of it here somewhere but the the skull look that um let me try and pull it up that uh Herodin is using is actually was on the ship their sh the ship that the new giant pirates are uh uh, sail, sail around together in. Let me pull that up. Uh, nope. Which one was that? No, there's the other. The big guy. Come on. I think it was this one. 895 maybe? Yeah, there it is. Come on. Yeah, and if you look on the ship head and on this little, so the, the new giant pirate ship, and I think the same thing with the Great Eric, has like a, in the, in the, instead of having a normal like um, top deck 
and the and the straw hat top deck isn't exactly the sunny isn't exactly normal. It's like a um uh uh has a, like a grass sort of I don't know if it's fake grass or something on the thing. So it's like a it's like some simulation. So it's like not a it's somewhere they can relax. It's like a little common area for them. And they, this ship here, I think it was a, like I said with the great Eric. And the, t the, the part where we see the ship is kind of like a Viking long ship, but they have like a, a cabin there. There's not like another deck above where the, sh the, the steering wheel would be, where the, uh, the, na na the navigator and the, um, what would you call it? What is uh, gene based position called? I can't think of it now. Instead, there's like a cabin there. But what I want to point out here is both the, 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 uh, front, the front of the ship, what do you call it, and then on, on top of the little cabin, there is a, uh, a bull skull there. This is definitely like, and it has the same design as the way Rhodes' uh, mask is. This one though has just horns, and the way the way Rhodes is wearing it has one. He his look more kind of like um, moose antlers, and so I'm wondering. He he looks like he may have took inspiration from this um, uh, sh this ship uh, part. What do you call that? <laughs> It's called the prow ship and it's like a figurehead yeah so they have a figurehead there at the top with the with the um skull and also i think yeah i think that's the same thing it actually has the um um let me pull up that chapter yeah he's got that same thing the figurehead on the ship they have is um has that white mane like thing on it and he and road imitated that as well in his cow his sun god um costume he uses when he goes into his Lego room enclosure. Um I call it enclosure because he's trapping humans in there. And uh we'll get into that. Um so this guy, like I said last time, clearly didn't understand how powerful humans are and he thought he that they had no way of escaping. But Nami and Luffy both taught him what's what there. Nami her she's she went and took him out Probably uh, and with a huge thunderbolt using Zeus, the uh, the um, cloud, the uh, living cloud. What's the word I was looking for? Living cloud. Whatever. That's a was a homie of um, Big Mom. Well, Luffy uh, punched through the wall easily. By the way, it looked like he was like other people are pointing out too. Like he does look like he can now in, in incorporate other attacks from his other gears, his gear four specifically, <coughs> without turning into the full form. Because he used a Kong gun instead of, I think the other one he had, his third gear punch was what, Elephant Magnum? Something like that. And that one, when he blows his hand up, he just has like a big Popeye fist. Like it's all expanded and his fist is huge and he hockeys it. Now he hockeys it. He didn't do it in the pre time skip. With the Kong gun, he retracts his hand into his wrist. And it also expands big, similar to the other third gear. But he, and he uses that by, uh, like I said, uh, and that just like he adds a little pop and out to punch out the um the uh, wall. So um yeah, so that was a uh, uh, quite a bit there. There was um sorry, this was the longest intro I've done I think. Um the uh oh God, <laughs> sorry I'm everywhere today. So let's get back into it. Also briefly, we're back with um uh. There's the uh, brief, uh, the, the cover story I haven't been going over. And then this one, the last one we saw that um, uh, the girl, what's her name? Not Otama. It's Otoko. Oh, I forget what those, those, those two girls. One of the Wano girl, she's the one with uh, the fruit that goes out like this. She, um, we saw in the last one, she was uh, training to be like a ninja. And uh, uh, Yamato is there, uh, was observing her training. And then this cover story today. We see them sleeping, and someone is stealing a katana they have there, which I don't know whose katana is. I thought that was, I don't think that's Kitetsu the second, right? A Kitetsu, let's see. No, don't they all have the same guard? I can't see here. I know little Zoro's guard looks like that with the four. <coughs> I don't think that was the one. Hey, pull up the image. Come on. No, that is a different one. Okay, I don't know what that so, katana this is. It's not Kitetsu the second. I was looking at the um the the uh, sheath because the sheath of this one is um 
is shown as being black with the little donut circles in there across it. And the guard's rather simple. It reminds me more of, um, that guard reminds me more of what uh, Wado Ichimoni has, where it's rather a, a kind of an oval guard, not, not, not as elaborate and, and looking as like Enma or um, Kitetsu the third has, or I think also the other Kitetsus. Uh, so someone's stealing some katana that's there next to Yamato, which is funny. I don't know why katana, she would have a katana with her. She likes to use a carnival like her dad. So um, we'll see where that goes. Because I always thought that plot was going to be falling more into though, because there was a few chapters back where it was getting interesting where she stopped some young woman along the road. It would be from Yamato was walking along a road and there was some other girl there who almost got kidnapped and we never saw who the assailant was. And I thought she was going to pursue that, but I think she was talking with one of the, um, was the cat or dog about that, but there were other disappearances, other people being kidnapped. This might be related. It's just funny that I didn't, I thought she was going to go like investigate herself, like maybe f try and follow the assailant who, uh, who made that attempted kidnapping, but it's not going that way. So I don't, I'll be interested to see where that story is going. <clears throat> uh, so this, at this point now, we get into the chapter and we switch back to the Straw Hats who are still with the giant pirates uh, on the Great Eric. And um, uh, Frankie and the others, they join, they regroup and they go to the others and said, tell them, uh, tell, um, they got Dorian Bragg and the others there. And they're like, well, we're going to call off the search for now because we can't, f uh, we can't find them and we, we should just continue our journey. So it looks like they may have halted where they were while they tried to find the our the other six. Wait, there's six, right? So yeah. The straw hats that got kidnapped are the first six when you count from Luffy up to Chopper. And so Frankie, Robin, Jean Bay, and Brooke are still with the giant pirates here. And um is this fine working? Check that. Yeah. Okay, so they and the other guys are like, what? Why should we do that? Um, I don't know why they're so surprised. They must have been looking for hours or more. And, um, and Frankie, why does Frankie look so serious though here? Frankie continues, he's like, he's like, he's yelling because they don't think they can hear him. But he's like, thanks for looking though, but we, we're sure they're going to be alive. And, and Robin follows up. Each of the other straw hats follow up in this conversation. Robin's there. They're all four together. <coughs> I think this is the first time we saw four together like that. She's like, well, let's, let's just wait for them in Albath. I'm sure they'll, ha once they, whatever happened to them, I'm sure they'll make sure they, that they'll want to still continue their journey there. Literally, no, now that they are there, but that's later. We'll find out. Uh, and Jean Bay's like, we have, I'm, I, we've done all we can. I even sent out a network of sharks to try and find something, and they didn't even find anything, and they're worn out from it. <laughs> Uh, and Brooke goes on like we're running out of rations as well, so we gotta get we not starve ourselves to death. Let's let's get to Albath. So how long were they looking at things? They must have been partying too much. I bet. I bet Luffy. You know, I bet Luffy can almost eat as much as a giant normally can, and when he when he gorges himself. <laughs> uh, and so which one is that? I think that's Bragi. I always get their names mixed up. The shorter guy. He's like, okay, then. Well, I under, well accept your wishes, and let's get, we should just go in then. And him, I think it's him, or it could be uh, the other one. He's like, all right, guys, you sh let's set the course back. Continue to Elbath. Go. And one of them says, let's have a toast to our homecoming. And one of the other uh, uh, giant uh, subordinates says, like, uh, boss, remember, we're out of food. We can't we can't have a toast now. <laughs> so the so straw hats, yeah. So they figured out they couldn't find him, obviously, because no one was standing guard. They didn't expect to be attacked. I... I'm a little disappointed because with the Marines chasing, almost trying to kill them at Egghead days ago, I'm surprised they didn't have someone on guard, you know, having taken a first watch, a second watch overnight to make sure that um, something like this didn't happen. They just partied and drank themselves silly. So it, it's a little, but it had, that's how we got the plot moving here. So we get there and uh luffy's we switch back to where we left off at luffy and he's looking around and he's commenting how everything's so huge and uh we, we see that they're out of a wall and it, this is the side of a castle 
I don't know whose castle it is. I don't think we get that information really. Uh, and so we get out there. We see. Yeah, we see they're still riding the cat here at first, and then we get a we get a nice wide shot here of the castle. So, so they're on a castle that. Yeah, this is probably what um the Stein Castle uh, replica. This is probably that that castle that Nami and Usopp were in. I think is a replica of this one. Actually, I wonder if I can pull that up a sec. Hold on. Uh, definitely in the way that where the castle. This so this real castle that they found themselves outside of now. The, the Stein Castle that Nami and Usopp in is definitely a um replica, and in, in, at least in step in the way it, where it's positioned on a giant. Uh, a, a small, I don't know if you call it like a plateau, a little hill, where it's got very narrow, the, the expanse of its ground take across that whole like physical, uh, natural structure, and it stands up the same in similar way with the towers. But now this one, obviously, Oda has made it clear, you, it's clearly here a real castle made of like uh, stones and concrete or something like that, um, rather than the one in, the, in this other, uh, they were in before that was um a uh, lego that's the thing i was thinking about too earlier like once we get to uh the animated portion of this which now we won't get to at all jesus that's the thing else i so i guess i think i couldn't find like enough where this officially came from but the one piece anime is going on hiatus till april i'm so disappointed it has to happen i'm sure but like i was so ready for kuma's backstory we're so we were so close to it they cut off basically in the middle, right after the intermission stuff happened. They had like Sabo and Garp and everyone. Um, so there's going to be a hiatus, and so I won't be able to react to that stuff. So I was just getting into the groove of that stuff. I started with Egghead, I think. Um, so now we see them looking around, and they're checking, like, what's going on here? Is it, what's over there in the distance? A mountain? And some people commenting, oh, this is, place is real cold. So they're in the dead of winter here in this portion. I don't know if this is a north. We, we don't know the geography of it yet, but uh, it's a cold area there now. It's a lot of snow blowing everywhere. And also we see what looks like Yikistril in the distance there. We used to see a silhouette of it. And we only see a, 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 a trunk plus one branch. So that thing is clearly even greater than the size of this castle. And by the way, this castle is a giant castle, not, not a castle for them. The, the, the Stein Castle, the little replica thing was made with the size of humans in mind, but this is not. So uh, actually, I forgot to mention too, when you, you can tell too, because when they, when they jump out, they show the, them on each cat jumping out. You can see it's a small little wall jutting out from another main wall, probably with a window there. You can see the size of the hole where Luffy punched with his Kong gun. So this is a giant castle meant for the living quarters of giants. And uh, so we now we get to meet some of the giants, so that we do. The, the strides are going to hide here. They see giants coming. There's also a bridge there, I forgot. It's weird. The bridge looks like it's going upward toward the Yuggis Trail. You can't see all of it. I think there's a clouds there, not it's brand, not leaves or anything of it. And um, it's... Uh, so they, they're out there near this bridge somewhere, and they... Uh, Trees. Oh yeah, so they they hide into some trees there, and just a moment. Where is that other one? Here we go. So, wait. Let's see. Get the other guys. Yeah. So we meet. We get to see two giants. We don't. I'm, I'm saying meeting them because now we're seeing them talk and do stuff. Because these are two giants from two of the chapter covers uh, that I was speaking earlier about with. Um, of these the showcasing these crew members these guys were are, are part of Herudin's crew he's their captain and uh, one was from chapter 899 and 8901 and uh one is named goldberg and one uh, the, the girls is a girl named gerd and she, he's the he's the cook and she's the doctor and uh their their, their designs are pretty cool although gerd is just basically a nami look look especially this one here i'm looking at 901 it looks kind of like Nami, but with a different outfit on. Same body type and stuff. Except she's got some neat clothes on. She's got a single piece outfit, but it doesn't cover all her legs. Which is kind of weird because they're in a winter area, but it doesn't seem to be bothering her. Though she, her left side's got like a, um, she's got like these uh, leg warmer things, but they look like the fur. 
and then but the left one continues with like a sock that goes almost up to, all the way up her thigh that stripes and the other one like I said, the other is like the other one just got the leg warmer on the calf warmer i guess you'd call it really just it's only going up to the knees with that fur part um uh uh see here now so they're having a conversation about road gerd and uh goldberg and she's fed up with road apparently and she's commenting to Ro goldberg like why did he why does Harudin let that uh crackpot she calls him in this transition stay on the crew and goldberg defends uh road by saying well he is a skilled navigator but um also, she's got an owl with her. Very cool. It looks uh, like a great horn type of owl or something. Um, so they're coming across that bridge back to the castle, I forgot to say. Uh, so now she starts talking. So we're going to, um, a little spoiler ahead, we're going to meet Loki in here. And she starts changing the subject to that. Um, why is she talking about that? Then going to that Loki. I don't get her. Why is she like that crackpot join the group? Because now she starts saying uh, he may be called Loki, the shame of Elbath, but he deserves that title. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. No, duh. She's calling. She thinks Road is the shame of Elbath. So Loki in here, we're going to find out, is called the shame of Elbath. He is royalty, apparently. I, I don't, I'll get ahead, I'm getting jumping ahead a bit again, but um, that's right. She said we may people of Albath may call Loki the shame of Albath, but Herod deserves that title even more. And he says uh, Goldberg just says laughs and says Road probably wouldn't even care about you calling him that. And so now they're coming back to the castle. Oh, that's right. So they're coming to the castle because her owl, whose name is uh, Piper saw the crow, his crow, uh, Rhodes crow, bring the, uh, the sunny over. And she's talking to it like, are you sure you saw him? Is that what you saw? And it, it answers her with a, like a hoot, but she must be under, good at understanding it. Uh, so they know about, and they know about Rhodes' um, uh, little transgressions with this, because then he, he's laughing again at about it, and he's like, oh, we're, we're supposed to be arresting intruders if they come in, but Rhodes keeps smuggling these ones in. By the way, I forgot to describe him a little bit. He's a really large, round guy, and he's carrying his own carnival. Uh, this carnival is so big, I don't think, I think it kind of would even be depressed, impressed, because this one, actually, it looks like it has a much longer handle. Like, if I was to try and wield a carnival, I'd probably want one like this. The way Kaido's looked always looked like it was too short, like it needed that kind of, this kind of length that this one has. So he's wielding it. Actually, yeah, he's um got a big, uh like a, I guess you'd call that a cloak, and he's shirtless, and his and he's got pants that are kind of striped, or what do you call it? And he, they just go out have uh, suspenders on him, uh, and he's wearing a helmet. And she's not. She's got and she's got nice um braids going on too. Yeah, these are the same designs from before. See, he, yeah, he's exactly the same. This is just this is basically the same drawing here. I'm looking from chapter nine oh eight nine nine. He basically just redid the same one. Actually, that's something. Oh, look at that. So he's got a shield, actually, and it. Um, he's holding it in the cover art piece. And it's weird because it has a face on it sticking his tongue out. This eyes and a mouth with a tongue out. And it's black and white striped. He's not. He's got it on his slung on his back at this, in this point. And she has a weapon, too. Actually, what is that? So you can't see it here. Actually, I wonder if that's a little mistake again. People point out that Oda makes these little mistakes, and I caught, I don't know if they really call this one. So in the cover art, cover thing of uh, Gerd, she's wielding, uh, holding it. No, that's why, because she's holding it. Duh, never mind. She's holding it. She wields a giant axe. Um, it's, so this blade is like bigger than her head. Like it's like the length. Of two, uh, that's gotta be. See if that was a human proportion, that'd probably be mm, almost two feet wide. It's a blade length or whatever. But uh, that's right. Okay, I was thinking. I was thinking it was a mistake. It's, it was. It's slung on her back. That's why it's coming up her left side. You can just see the handle here. You can't even see the blade because she's got a long cloak on too. But actually, yeah, she's holding it here in the um, 
and uh, and center hand left hand. That's why it looked different. Oops. Okay, so they continue to chip to continue down the bridge. They, they're coming off the bridge and walking into the, the the in front of the castle, and the straw hats are hanging out behind some of the um, um, wood uh, vertical uh, parts of the the bridge to stay out of sight there. Luffy keeps creeping out though, and the others are like, "Luffy, get back!" But he's like, "Oh, I want to introduce myself. They look nice enough." And um, so the conversations continue. Where uh, Gerd says to Goldberg, "We'll let Elder Yarl know as soon as we find those intruders." Yeah. So um. <laughs> Uh, so the others ones did Usopp and Sanji and uh, also are getting really excited and Usopp's like oh did you hear this is Elbaf we finally made it and uh, Us uh, Sanji as you would expect has gotten a real good look at Gerd and is swooning over her to, in his, to himself already uh, and then Us yeah Luffy keeps thinking oh they're nice people and he starts trying to call out to him and Nami has to stop him and she's whispering stop don't you didn't you hear what they said they're looking for intruders we not we might not be welcome here and then they they all they must have heard Luffy because he started calling out and they they uh, turned Gerd and Goldberg it's like thirsty um and they start hearing it and they, they Nami must have got them back just in time because I know they were like they were like peeking out before and they look there and then there's just silence, and then they all say, "Oh, probably nothing." Um, so they go inside and look for Road. They knock at the door, and that's, I think that's the last we're going to see of them today, right? I think so. So now the Straw Hats begin crossing the bridge. Uh, Luffy actually jumped inside to cross it on the rope, and he's looking around, and. Uh, the others are trying to cross. Who is that? Someone's riding. Chopper's actually back in his regular zone form. And, uh, oh, I didn't see that before. No, I'll get to a second. So it's, I think Nami looks like she's riding on Chopper because it's the, the, the gaps of the boards are so big that it's tricky for her to get across. Wait, one, two, three, four. Where's Zoro there? Uh, I don't know, some of the others are still jumping across just fine, probably Sanji and Zoro, but I think Nami and Usopp possibly are on riding on Chopper because in that form he would have an easy time traversing these gaps. Um, someone else is saying that. Who's saying that? Oh, don't worry, Nami. She's a, she's worried about the gaps. Someone else is saying, oh, this easy. Just keep practicing. I used to do this easy as a, when I crossed gaps like this all the time as a kid. I suspect that's Usopp. So also, so one last thing too, they're, they're being very careful on not falling because I just saw the little illustration that Oda kind of snuck in there. There are wolves down below and it looks like they see them. Uh, so the wolves see the straw hat, so they're hoping that the, one of them would fall down so they could have them as a snack. And uh, actually, oh, there's two more right there. there are, so Oda just sketched them in the background. It's kind of neat how he, it's almost like a hidden picture thing. So Luffy's there kind of like looking around and something's bothering him. And Luffy, uh, Zoro catches it and says, what's going on, Luffy? And he's like, do you feel that? I keep getting, I'm feeling something odd. Wait, what are they worried about? So the other two is like saying, um, don't go down. He's saying, uh, he, so he's sensing a presence. I, I think it's the best way to say what's going on. He calls it a, a roar. And he said he was even noticing it back when he was in um, uh, the block in the enclosure, I want to call it. And, uh, oh, I see why. <laughs> oh, I just got that other part. Uh, uh, Zoro wants to, so Zoro's seeing, oh, you want to go down and investigate, right? And Sanji stopped Zoro and said, no, 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 no. We're not, the force is off limits. We don't need to get lost down there either because Zoro, Luffy, uh, Zoro would definitely get lost in some place like that. But Luffy takes initiative and says, no, I need to go check this out. And he leaps from the bridge because they're crossing over that wood. Like I said, the, the bridge was going up over this woods up to some other place in the clouds. And But Luffy decides, no, I have to investigate what this is. And he jumps down 
and just the others are like, oh shit. <laughs> and we just leave that. We leave from there for a little bit. So now we go back to the other straw hats and the giants. And they're reading the paper, uh, Morgan's news paper, uh, what he's reported. And they're surprised because now he's reported, he's found out about how Dorian Brocky were there. And he's re- put that in the paper. And Dorian Brocky are like, oh man, they, they're saying that we attacked Egghead too? Why would they lie like that? So, you know, that's something too that we have to probably keep in mind that the Elbathian, the Giants, they're probably people who are generally extremely oddy, uh, honest. So they're probably not going to be used to this kind of, not propaganda in this case, but just outright, uh, what would you call that? Not libel? Is that what it is? Libel when it's written? Libel and, um, I can't remember that word right now. <laughs> and uh, so Robin's looking at it and, uh, Bragi says, wait, I can't read that. Can you? And Nami's like, uh, Robin says, well, don't worry. I'll read it to you guys. Uh, it, and so she's quoting from the paper about how uh, the giant warrior pirates have awoken after a century-long experience, uh, absence. They set Egghead ablaze with Emperor Straw Hat Luffy. Uh, and then they, we see the wanted posters. I think that's similar to the ones we had before, but now their bounties have gone up quite nicely. Uh, and actually, probably because of... Uh, Maybe inflation <laughs> or something like that, um, or diff- different. Uh, not Robin Thomas on something like that. So each these legendary captains have received new bounties, and they both got a bounty each of one point eight billion. So that's um, that's real high. See, that's about as much as um, uh, close to crocodile. I think it is one point nine five or so, and so that's um, bigger than what Luffy's was before Wano. And that, that close to that, so they're they're pretty high up there now as far as bounties go. I think that is that higher than Hancock's. Hancock's was really high too, but when a billion, one billion something, but I forget the exact one. And so yeah, Broggy's like, oh my god, one point eight billion. Um, uh, and Brog and Dory points out like we weren't trying to make a comeback. Like I think they just wanted to lay low. Okay, so it's something else there. The bounties were one. 100 million before which is very was back at, um we found that out back at uh through mr three i believe back in uh with little garden and back then that was a very high bounty because we had luffy's were still 30 million and we didn't have any other bounties i think really to compare to yet i don't think we got robins or crocodiles former bounties at the time until we got into alabasta which were like 80 and 81 or so respectively something like that and um, so, wait a second. Sorry about that. I'm trying to look up something because I was confused. So the next portion of the story is a little confusing here. Uh, so f- well, first, Robin continues pointing out that they're now blaming Luffy for Vegapunk's murder. Uh, they're calling it murder. And uh, yeah, and Frankie here gets really upset and says how they're always changing the narrative and stuff like that. And uh, Lilith is there too listening and she just laughs like, oh, so they think you guys killed me. And this just makes, this makes Frankie a little angry. Actually, I, I, by the way, I like how Frankie looks. He's got a different outfit on. It looks like a leather jacket with a cowboy looking hat or something close. And he's got a big chain on his neck. He's, he's looking and he's got sunglasses, maybe. He's looking very spiffy there. He actually, with that hair look, he looked, this image right here in particular, when he's talking about Lilith, his facial look, he reminds me more of how he looked in the pre-time skip, which was a design I was quite in favor of and quite liked. And I didn't care as much for his shaved head look that he had, I think, up and through uh, through uh, post-time skip through, um, was it up to Dress Rosa or thereabouts? He had a different hair there. I don't know how he's, his hair comes back so quickly. Uh... Oh, I see here now. So they're also, by the way, they're, they're showing a picture of Luffy in his Gear 5 form. This must have been when he was fighting Luchi, I'm thinking. Because Sony even points this out. Brooke, well, Brooke first says, wait, where was this picture taken? And then uh, and Jean-Bay's pointing out the, the, how the paper, or Morgan's paper, they always seem to get a good scoop. And whoever took that picture probably got a handsome reward. So one of the other researchers or other staff people who were still fleeing the... Um, Island actually someone must have stopped and used a dendan mushy and they 
got a picture of Luffy as he was fighting Luchi, I'm thinking, because that looks kind of like him when he was jumping around like that, having fun, because when he was fighting Luchi, he wasn't serious, of course, and he, uh, he, um, so, so someone got that and put that into the paper. So here's where it gets a little uh, funny. There's a picture here, the picture of Luchi, he has a, Luffy, he has an X on his arm, and Robin sees it and says when he turns into that, she calls it, oh, I like how she calls it the freedom form. Does he normally get a mark on his arm? So he's got an X on his left forearm. And this immediately made me think of the point in um, when they were with Vivi and they had to make sure Bon Clay wasn't going to impersonate one of them. And they all put those X's on their forearms. This is the, I'm pulling up this image here. It looks like it's the same arm. It's, they all put it on their left arm, the other straw hats at the time. And Vivi would have done the same. Uh, to um, uh, to put it on their arm. Yeah, I'm very confused by this. I can't wait to see what the other people say about this. But, so, I don't get what's going on with that. So, Robin just looks at, like, his arm is blurry in the picture, but that mark is clearly, uh, it clearly looks like a plus or an X. Uh, the way it's, actually, the way it's tilted on his arm, it's like uh, an X on his uh, forearm. And um, and Frankie says, well, what about it? Why, why worry about it? And she's like, I don't, I'm not that. It's just something about it seems very familiar. And she's funny here. I know she's sitting, I think she's just sitting on a die, you know, little dice. And she's, it's just enough there, just the right height where she can sit on it just fine. Um, so then Bragi, uh, who is it? No, Dory. I like that Dory brings up, oh. You guys are going to know, oh, Luffy's an emperor now. So now he's officially in a similar standing as Red Hair, huh? <laughs> that was That's good he know, observed that. So Luffy wasn't there to hear that. So here's where we're, we're going to get some lore drop here. So now Broggy says, uh, uh, is that Broggy? Yeah, wait, I can't get any of these up. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, Broggy. So Dory was saying, Dory was the one saying, yeah, now you... With now with Luffy as emperor, he's a, he's considered in, in the same status as Lu, uh, Red Hair, uh, meaning Shanks. And then Bragi goes on saying, "Oh, even I heard that that whippersnapper of ours, Harudin's about under uh, as joined as your subordinate." Oh, here we go. Okay, this is where I didn't catch this. I was talking. I, I talk about this. I don't know if I did, but I was rewatching the fight where Luffy and Harudin met in the arena in um, Coliseum in Dressrosa. So the other guy here, is that Kachi? It's one of the other two from um, uh, 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 that were at Eni's lobby and their subordinates to Dorian Bragi. He points out, oh, that, that kid, he, you know he's the king's son, right? Oh, God, so he's a prince. Okay, because he thought there was something in there. I, I thought he, there was something in the, the dialogue where the, the, um, the announcer at um, Dressrosa was talking about, oh, did Harudin say it in there? Like he wants to be king of the giants. So he, I thought that meant he had to like fight for it. I still can't kind of think that he has to fight for this somehow. And uh, so Frankie's like, wait, really? He's a prince? And, uh, and well, hold on a second. All right, where was I? Um, I had to take a stop there to help someone. Um, <clears throat> Pinky, stop it, please, come on. So, uh, I think I ended last. Okay, I, I'm gonna wait, about 20 minutes away from this. Uh, uh, so, oh, I think I remember now, this guy was going on by saying, the, the one subordinate, uh, by pointing out how Harudin wanted to go be the one to fetch the straw hats from Egghead, <clears throat> but we had seniority. So they said, no, you're gonna stay there, basically, and we'll keep an eye on uh, Keep an eye on Elbath uh, while we go, and uh, maybe maybe for the better. These guys are probably a little tougher. Uh, and he, he points out some of that we might keep an eye out for trouble. And um, the, one of the other straw has like, trouble? What kind of trouble do you have going on there? So this other one continues. There's this other subordinate, and this one I don't think it had a name. He's the, is he the one that was telling them about the drink, how it might give you hallucinations? He's got a... Um, Square looking face, short dark hair, and a little mustache. Hold on a second. Huh? 
And this guy's continuing the story because it says, because this is something that he says happened while Dorian and Bragi were missing. And he says, Elbath has a second prince other than Harudin, so I guess uh, uh, his brother. And, uh, and he said when he was born, people had started calling him the, this translation calls him the accursed prince. I'm interested in exactly what word you're going to use in the official translation. And he, he's pointing out, he continues by saying that this, that the other prince had devoted himself to uh, darkness. And so, he, I don't know if they mean like he's, I'm thinking magic, because this is going to be Loki. Spoiler, spoiler, oh, you are here for that. Um, <clears throat> so he's probably studying other stuff that's dangerous. He's probably, I'm thinking like um, Voldemort, Voldemort type stuff. But he, he delved into stuff that most people would never study. Uh, so he, he must have committed some other crimes because they said he was sentenced to a crucifixion punishment a few years ago. So, geez, he must have been really Because this is the prince they're talking about uh, of royalty. So he found out they were coming after him. and He attempted to flee, but they were able to come together and catch him. And when this happens, uh, Jean Bay knows who this is. He must have heard these stories. I wonder if he heard them from Big Mom. Um, uh, wait a minute, where's that one point now? Because now there's something here I want to think of. Because they show, where was that point with them? Yeah, because they just have this one silhouette here. Yeah, because he's going to be a lot different. There's a silhouette here. I, we were looking, talking about this before. But he's uh, quite a bit different than this. Um, I just was trying to wonder if Jean Bay learned his name through Big Mom. Yeah. And so, yeah, Frank is like, wow, it took all the warriors of Elbath to catch him? So I didn't, did I say that properly? Yeah. They had to muster every warrior they had together as like a, I guess like a, 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 a militia. Well, not really a militia because they're, they're not, militias are different than this. They're, they're proper, they had to gather the whole army, I guess you could say. Um, and they said, uh, they pointed out, well, he's not right in the head. I think what they're saying is, yeah, he, he really required that much um, force to catch him. And so they point out the reason that he what really, like, this sounds like this is what really, oh, I get this, so duh. This is why they really, the crime he committed, duh. So they said, he, there's a legendary devil fruit said to be passed down through the royal family. So I'm thinking then the father must have had this because he, that, uh, or maybe they're not even using it because some, um, this is the part that's not quite clear there. But they point out, they, they continue with life to say that Loki's lust for power or her desire, they call it here, was so great to eat it. Okay, so no one, no, they're not, they have it, but they're not using it. Okay, so here, um, he, so they said that, that Loki had actually committed patricide and killed his own father. Is that the right word? Patricide? I think so. Hold on. Here, let's Google it right here. Patricide. Yeah, killing one's father. Yeah, yeah. So he made patricide. You know, it was a very unforgivable crime. The crime. Of, I remember, like in, uh, in other uh, cultures, like Greece. I know it was uh, if, if you uh, the story of Hercules. He kills his family, and it's because Hera did it to him. But it was even though she caused him to do it, it was still a crime. The blood was still in his hands, and that's where the twelve labors came. He was trying to cleanse himself of the, the sin of killing his family, bit more or less. And uh, <clears throat> so there seems to be something like that going on here. Uh, uh, so here we go. Now we go to the shame of Elbath thing again. So the guy, this other one continues by saying, that's why we won't let that accursed prince loose again. If Loki ever escapes, it'll be the end of everything, he says. He, and then they continue with the very dramatic, he's the shame of Elbath. They just have the lines very bold here. And also, when as that guy's continuing his story, we briefly see that image here from, uh, I pull up out here where, uh, where he was um, uh, proposing to Lola. And he looks a lot smaller there because Lola's, I think, about average height for, uh, in One Piece standards anyway. She's not, um, Oh, yeah, they still have this here. They're probably going to change this at some point then. Um, nope. Oh, I'm keep that there. So this, is the, so this is the guy now. I keep forgetting to remember, really think about this. This is the guy that 
he i'm thinking well, now i'm just wondering so big mom wanted alliance with the giants and she had lola she was gonna have lola marry loki <coughs> <coughs> and she had no interest in that and fled we met her in the in the one, new world uh old the paradise side at, uh she was trapped there with uh well, well, with her crew as part under Moria's because of Moria. <clears throat> so now I'm just I'm, I'm gonna stop there and just point out like okay now think about is like did Harudin wouldn't a uh, big mom been better off to try and have Lola marry Harudin? It sounds like that's the prince they want to have succeed in the throne, or maybe like that's something else too. Harold's dead, this king who's running the country right now. Where is that? He killed his own father. So King Harold, by the way, too, I looked. There's a, the king I, uh, who was the first official king of, I think that they're naming him after, the, is the uh, first king to claim sovereignty over all of Norway, according to the uh, Cyclopedia Britannica. Britannica, Britannica yeah. uh, um, uh, website. Ooh, no, no, no. I'll, actually, I'll link this. I'm trying to remember to link this in the... Um, my video there's a nice um stained glass image of that guy and he looks very stoic and he's got like looks like he had long blonde hair and they had to really go uh, i always think of the people of gaul the gallic um warriors that julius caesar fought and others in rome uh in roman times he has that kind of look going on and he's uh got the viking kind of outfit he's got a red red cape and a green tunic uh what's this from us uh, it's in scotland Ah, oh, from a cathedral in Scotland. Okay. Uh, so I'm thinking that's what the... <coughs> now Oda's now incorporating some history, historical character, people <coughs> into this story here. <coughs> but, uh, so I, I, what I was trying to get back to, I lost my train of thought, is, is that guy's finishing this story about that they never want to let Loki loose. They show that silhouette again. Wait, is that the same one? Hold on. I don't know. Uh... Wait, where'd that one go? Here it is. It's similar. It's kind of weird looking. They, they show his eyes the same as that <coughs> silhouette from Lola's perspective, where he's got the just the round eyes. It's the white and it's a dark silhouette with his teeth. But he has his tongue out in this vision that's behind that giant telling the story. But so but we're finally going to see him though. So we jump to him now. And that's why I was bringing up Harold's description, because I think Oda's basing that similarities of this being the son of that, the real King Harold, because we see Luffy walking up to Loki, and he is chained up against probably the, a trunk of, the trunk of Yggdrasil. He's quite the, the looker. He's, and also, he looks like he's even bigger than other... No, it's probably the same size as other giants. Could be taller. So he's wearing dark clothing, <coughs> pants and boots... <coughs> He's got a belt. You can see his belt. And it's got a skull sigil <clears throat> in the middle of some other white curvy things. But he's all chained up. <clears throat> he's got all these chains around him. And he there's something else behind him. Is that a weapon? His weapon? He's also wearing a big skull, that, uh, a cap that's uh, black with a, some, a small brim that has these two huge horns out. And it's really reminiscent of uh, the Marvel version of Loki there. <clears throat> And he's sitting there smiling. He's got a little goatee going on. He doesn't have any full beard, just a short goatee that would probably be like our standards, about two or three inches long. And he's smiling there. But uh, And he's got really long hair that is it's just white looking. So I'm thinking it's supposed to be blonde, like the King Harold stained glass I was just describing to you. And um, he, um, oh, he does stick his tongue out. That's why they're showing it. So he sticks his tongue out when he's talking. So I'm jumping ahead. He, um... He, he looks like he's rather little, tall and limber kind of built, too. You can see part of his arms there, and he looks like he has tattoos. Uh, and I think he's got braids coming down as well. But the most interesting thing here is he's, his eyes are blindfolded. So I thought I read in some spoilers that they're implying that he might be blind. He may have been blinded. But that doesn't seem to be stopping him. Whether through his hearing or maybe he's got, like, hockey, which is why I'm thinking uh, Luffy's observation, through his observation, hockey was sensing this guy. He, he, Luffy's walking up to him toward his, uh, he's got his legs, uh, Luffy's like wrapped to his feet there. And Loki senses him. <clears throat> and Luffy, he asks like, who's coming here? State your name. 
And Luffy does what he always does. He's, he just says, oh, I'm Luffy, the man who will be the king of the pirates. And, uh, and he's like, king? Like he's like singing another guy. <laughs> so that catches his attention. And you get a little shot there. Actually, I want to zoom in on that more. Yeah, what is that there? Is that his weapon still? I can't tell. It looks like a staff. The handle of a weapon was left with him. Actually, now that you, when I zoom in on that shot, he's got like boots kind of like um, the same as what uh, Katakuri would wear or what we saw Road wearing. Um, so we get now we get a great um, spread shot. And it's like the officially showing where we are. <clears throat> and we see Yegas Trail in its finest. And uh, it's got this similar look I've seen elsewhere. <clears throat> Actually, this reminds me of... Uh, I'll, t I'll get there in a second. <coughs> so it's a great thick trunk. And it's got two levels of branches going on. <clears throat> um, Imagine what the hell? There's an enormous sword going through it. Oh, by it. It's cutting across its right side. It's like a, it's a, not a rapier. It's not, it's a, it's very thin long sword. It's not like a broad sword, I guess. Is that water coming from it? So uh, Luffy though, because I, oh, where, where is this place and who are you? <clears throat> and, uh, and this guy starts, I think he's kind of yelling. It's like, ah, this is the warland of the mighty, the mighty kingdom of Albath. And he says, they even, some even say it's a birthplace of war. And then he starts talking about himself. He's like, I am the sun god who will bring about the end of the world, Loki. And it just ends right there. We don't even get to see Luffy's reaction to that. We just see him claim that. And he's, he's, like I said, his tongue's out again. He's got that, is that what Dolphunga would do? Sometimes it's not the same as like, uh, it reminds me actually a bit of uh, Capone Beige, uh, one uh, subordinate that had a tongue out all the time. That's called Creepy Guy. He's with the, like the slick back hair. I forget his name, as I usually do. <laughs> So he looks quite a bit different than um, Perudin, we got to point out. I'm wondering if they don't have the same mother. Perudin, I think, if I recall correctly, was meant to be fashioned after Randy Savage, the former wrestler, rest in peace. Because um, he has a great thick, dark mane of hair, and he's got the very strong jaw and a, jo a goatee. No, it's not goatee. It's a full beard, but it's not very long. And um, actually, I just noticed when he shows the, when he had this picture there of uh, Harun in, in this cover art from chapter 896, the, the, the uh, bull skull is also behind him. He must be in front of his ship. <clears throat> yeah, but looking at him and looking at Loki here, there's quite a difference in their appearance. Yeah, because this guy's got a narrow kind of jaw, not, not weak looking, but it's just like, angular in a point almost pointed sense where Rudin's got like a squarish jaw going on and a completely different helmets um so i'm wondering though if Loki, if uh, oda's going for kind of a thor and loki relationship here with these two even though he didn't name one thor i'm thinking thor there will be a thor here <clears throat> but since the, they didn't specifically say but they said there's another prince they didn't say they're brothers but there must be something going on here that i'm I'm sure we'll find out soon. Hopefully the next chapter will give us a little bit of it. Um, so, holy shit. Loki's there. So what did he say? Luffy said, I got to stop sitting there. Luffy said he sensed something at the, when they were in the, in the, uh, um, I got to check that. I have a feeling I know what he's talking about. I think I saw that one point. He said he sensed something. Where was that? Uh, let me try to skim through this quickly. Um, no, because you see the straw hats? No, that wasn't the one there, because that one had Nami. <coughs> RPG chapter, let's check. <coughs> no. Let's see. Hmm. So, that was trying to... So, I swear there was a point where I thought Luffy was, like, sensing something in the other chapters, but I can't find that panel right now. Because that's what he said. He sensed this before. So he was sensing Loki's president, presence. Uh, and he's like. So he's sensing the danger, perhaps, of the presence of Loki, I think. He's talking about how he had goosebumps from that. And uh, 
Now, so some other questions too, right away. What <laughs> is this castle where the new giant pirates live? We don't. We never see anything else about that just yet. Uh, the, this is clearly, like I said, a big enough castle for. This actually doesn't look like a castle that can hold too many people. It's not like a full size. When I said full size, it doesn't look like a castle that's meant to hold like dozens of people or uh, maybe a couple dozen. Looking at the height and size, it looks it's like it only looks like by a human size, it would be like 60, 70 feet with that tallest tower, which probably maybe that's normal for a castle, some castles, but the length and width of it is like just a, a larger church, I would think of it as. <coughs> <clears throat> so uh yeah it's funny that loki's just right there and also i'm thinking this is not all of albath here we see this bit here with the um yigastril um i don't think we ever got a look at that at that in um uh when uh shanks was there oh that's the last, last thing too this this with the tree the other thing to go with that is this tree here that where the tree is looks like it's near a shoreline so I'm thinking there's uh, other parts further in, and Yigastro just sits there on one end of the island, perhaps. <clears throat> uh, but also there was like that bridge was going up there. I'm trying to look here. There's something with right in the middle there. It looks like there's structures built on that first level of Yigastro there. Yeah, so the town. Oh, is there a rainbow over there? It also looks like there's water falling from it somehow. I can't tell if this is supposed to be a cloudy day or sunny day. It looks like there's clouds. Oh, well, there was snowing before, so no, there's a storm. It's probably daytime, but there's like snow probably coming down at the moment. Cause it looked like there was a storm. Yeah, there is actually. Yeah, when you look at Loki's face double page, you see the. It looks like it's supposed to be a factual wind blowing. And snow there. No, that was not really wind. Are those wires or something holding him? A lot of stuff here to examine with that, but uh. This story, too, about Loki is very interesting. I think what they're going for here is this, again, uh, Otis going for the myth here. Where is it? I have this book here. I have this one myth book, myth book here, and I was looking at it, and, uh, yeah, Yogi has some brothers or sisters there, but nothing named Harudin. I wonder where he got that name from. He had a, some named Agro, Agroboda. Oh, yeah, that was that character. They had her in the uh, God of War game, didn't she? And sing, sing. Hmm. So that's a different family line from distant from uh, Odin and Thor. It looks like they're related somehow, but not not. It's not the way um, someone here. It's not the way um, Marvel did it with the comics and movies, where Thor and Loki are are brothers and um, adopted. Well, in that way, they're adopted. Uh, Loki's adopted, but. Uh, in, uh, in this story, uh, Odin is a blood brother to um, Loki, but Loki's always causing trouble for the Asnir uh, gods. Maybe the other, what were the other ones called? The Vanir. So th this is very interesting that Odin's going to take it his own way here. I can't wait to see what that is. So Loki, uh, back to the myth. Loki's clearly here being to fall along with the myth where he's in there. I think he's like tied in, uh, locked up in a cave though, and they hang a viper or something over him. And it's constantly dripping poison into his eyes, which is why I think they're going for the, the thing with his eyes are covered here. Like maybe he is blind and that from his punishment, maybe they took his eyes out or something. They talked about crucifixion though here. Instead though, they just have him tied up here. I don't think they have his arms. You can't actually see where his hands, let me see, even in that one. No, it doesn't look like they did anything like that. They just have him sitting at the trunk of the tree and his, his arms are chained around his wrists and they're going around somewhere there. But if he's at the trunk of that, they must be like, had to stake those into the trunk of the tree, perhaps. Last thing too, Loki here says something about, I'm um, the sun god will bring about the end of the world. So there's a lot of sun gods we're seeing in here. We saw Rhodes pretending to be a sun god. This guy's claiming to be, so he's claiming the sun god will bring about the end of the world. I'm thinking he's referring to some kind of, um, legend or something that they must have and we saw that dorian bragi said that luffy is why does he look like the sun god so there's some situ there's probably some artwork for five here maybe they have like churches or, or temples <laughs> for their gods and they're gonna um hopefully we'll get to see it's probably gonna be similar to that thing that we saw when um i think we first saw it when who's who was fighting um Jean Bay, and then we saw again when luffy jumps in the sky 
it's that thing where he's kind of like, oh, I can't do it here. He's got his arms, and he's like dancing, and he's holding a spear. Uh, maybe that spear would have something to do with a special weapon here. I keep seeing people do that with <laughs> Usopp, where he might um gain a uh, mirror in here. But Lu I'm thinking about that spear that Luffy had and the, the silhouettes of the sun god and that uh, Luffy could get something, though he doesn't like weapons. But he didn't want, no, he wanted a Kitetsu, though. He wanted a samurai sword just for the effect, but he didn't use it right anyways. He had it, but he wasn't even cutting people. He just kept punching. So even if he got a spear or something, he still wouldn't use it right. <laughs> but uh, back to Loki, I'm wondering if there's a legend here we'll learn about where the sun god thing is bringing about the end of the world. And that I'm thinking that means more like the world outside, the whole world, like the, the, the prophecy that was leading into what Luffy's encounter with either Blackbeard and or Im at some point there. So uh, it's interesting that Loki, I wonder if Loki just thinks he's the one to, uh, he's self-professing, oh, I'm, I'm going to bring out the end of the world. Maybe he wants to bring out the end of the world and he believes that uh, some prophecy will include him. I'll, and uh, so we'll hopefully find out about that. I'm sure we will, I should say. Uh, and one other thing, too, this sword. What's up with this sword here? Or, or that sword looks like, if I'm getting the, yeah, oh, wait, yeah, definitely. So I just look closer at this double page of Yucastro. You can see the castle they're at. There. <coughs> Actually, oh, I just saw that. And the last little thing, there was last, one last other thing talking. We, the Straw Hats, I can see the bridge and the castle that the Straw Hats just escaped from. And someone is saying, oh, it's shaking again. I mean, maybe the wind is making the, um, the bridge sway, I suspect. But back to that sword, it is enormous. It, I can't put words into how big that is because we're already in the land of giants. So that castle looks like it would be five, 600 feet tall for our scale. This sword, then by that amount of thing, would be a couple miles or more long. Whatever, that would be in kilometers, so I don't know metric. <clears throat> it's just, that's so big that I don't even think the Iron Giant, like the Iron Giant Emmett we saw at Elbath, no, at Wall, Egg, Egghead, I think was bigger than most of the giants, and he couldn't even scale, be scaled right with this thing. Oh, wait, though. I was, my question was, who could lift it? That's what I'm about to get into. Luffy can make himself bigger. What if he can become so big he can lift that sword out? It's just sitting in the tree, though. I was going to say, oh, is this like a King Arthur thing? But it's not sitting in a stone. It's sitting in the, um, into, uh, into the trunk of the tree, it appears. So what if Luffy could lift that up? I was just talking about him getting a weapon. There it is. He could get that sword. Maybe that's some prophetic thing going on there. Uh, we'll see. One other thing, too, that I actually cut. It looks like there's supposed to be the Rainbow Bridge. What do they call it? The Bifrost. There's a rainbow over there, I'm sure of it. If you can see between the two levels on the right side that are, it's supposed to be there. I bet that's the Bifrost. And it does look like there's other buildings there. And actually, cannons as well. Unless those, oh wait, are those telescopes? There's something near that level there. Uh, so yeah, the other thing too with that, something there, yeah, with those telescopes or cannons. Well, another thing too there, that is clearly, I was right, the, that castle is on the ground level there, compared to the tree. And then there's a bridge going up where we saw Gerd and Goldberg coming down. So they were coming from this other town to this castle, which maybe is like their base of operations. Uh, by the way, too, I forgot as well. They have this dramatic L bath thing right below the tree part uh, there, uh, uh, Oda put in. And uh, yeah, holy shit, this was crazy. The the, the thing with Harudin and stuff was uh, interesting. And I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I want to make another video on this somehow. I just don't know what angles to talk about. That's why I, I kind of do my thoughts at the end this way to get them out. Uh, and also, we're going on a two-week break. So that would be uh, next week. That probably means we'll not see anything until the, the end of the first week of November, around the 8th, maybe. Because usually one week break means next week, 25th. If we had a one-week break, we'd probably see something around the end of uh, Halloween. But it looks like we'll probably not see anything until um, then. So sh that sucks. But uh, holy shit, a lot happened here today. A lot, of, a lot of stuff here with the Loki thing and the Harudin thing. Now i got to go back and watch Harudin's entrance again. I'm going to go look into that. And then I want to find out what this X thing is all about. So, and of course, there was the bounties and everything. Uh, that was it. I'm... 
it's getting late here now. I'm gonna so I gotta go eat dinner soon. So uh, I'm gonna just upload this soon. Thanks for watching.